Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. This is another video and you're like, oh my gosh, it's cast iron. I thought you didn't work on cast iron. You're correct and not correct. I won't, I won't port cast iron, but I'll work on them like valve jobs and milling and that sort of stuff or flowing them. That's another thing too. So what has happened here is that it looks like a Vortec head, a small block Chevy Vortec head. And you're correct, that's kind of what it is. But this is actually from Speedmaster. Speedmaster, as you know, used to be Pro Comp. They've changed their names. There's a whole long list of things if you want to get in, follow a rabbit hole down. So look up uh, Pro Comp problems or Speedmaster problems. But anyway, customer sent this in. Said, hey, can you just do a little evaluation on it? And I feel bad for the guy. So if the guy's watching this video, finally, um, sorry it took so long. It's been pretty busy in the shop. But... Uh, we'll go through it and I'll try to give you both my opinions on the head and actual flow numbers from the head and actual um, numbers. So opinion and as much facts as I can give. First off, um, the head from the outside, it's similar to a Vortex. So you can see you got your one hump here because like there's two different Vortex styles. There's a 906 and 062. Some have a sawtooth and some have that lump there. Um, it doesn't look as like it, there's a whole lump there, but I'm going to explain more about that in a minute. The other end, you've got the same lump, so it doesn't have that sawtooth one. So, but it does look close. Now, if you're like, why does it look different? They, I think, and this is opinion part, I think they paint the head first before they do any of the machine work. Otherwise, it'd be a real pain to mask everything off. And probably the reason for painting it is that it um, prevents it from rusting and probably just to help on returns. There is a lot of Cosmoline. That's why it looks like rust here, but it's... Um, Partly it is rust, but it's also part Cosmoline. Cosmoline is like this oil preservative that they put on um, machine surfaces that are cast iron to prevent rust. Because if you look here, there's black that looks like it's painted there. Um, but you, you kind of get the idea, in other words, what I'm trying to say. Um, it also, like if you're running circle track, um, some of the classes will allow you to run 906 heads. Some, and it's pretty weird, will allow you to run 906 heads or 062 Vortec heads but they have to be stock ones. They can't be aftermarket. For instance, EQ used to make an amazing Vortec head and they no longer make it anymore. Um, you might be able to find it used, but they stopped making them. And they actually had it in two patterns. So for instance, this is Vortec pattern. The EQ used to make one that was for standard too. So you can run a standard gas and a standard intake manifold instead of just the Vortec style. But they don't, like I said, they don't make them. They used to also have them where you had the valve cover bolts here and the center ones there. Again, they don't make them anymore. That head really did flow well, much better than a stock one. It had the sawtooth on one end and it had the lump on the other. It was pretty good, but it would always fail on tech um, if they had a rule for not allowing aftermarket heads because if you pulled off the EQ, the valve cover on the EQ head, I think it would say 906 on one side, but the big thing was it had that Tawamba logo, which is where it was cast, dead giveaway. So it was instantly illegal. The, out, the rest of the head looked virtually the same. And now you're like, well, that's got nothing to do with this head. Well, let me tell you why. If you're at a circle track and you try running this, this might get you by. But the minute they take off the valve cover and they go to look, there's no 906 number or 062 number here where it should be. And that doesn't exist on a stock one. So it's a giveaway that it's, it's not stock. Um, so if you have rules for circle track classes that require you run a stock Vortec head, no aftermarket castings, this would fail. Unless, and that, I guess you could say it depends on your tech guy. Some tech guys are better than others. But regardless, does this, is this actually better than the stock one? We're going to try to get some better ideas. Here's some more facts about it. As you can tell, it's got cast iron guides. And that's normal for um, factory Vortec heads too. Even the EQ ones have that. So they've got this factory cast iron guide. Aftermarket heads, most of them have a bronze guide. And if you are running in circle track, I would recommend you having these cut out and replaced with bronze. And the reason why, especially on two barrel deals, for whatever reason, it seems like the cast iron guides want to grab the valve, even though you can run a much looser clearance, and want to grab the valve and try sticking them. Um, it's so inconsistent, and I, that's one of those things where I still haven't been able to pinpoint the exact problem. But usually when you put in guides, bronze guides, that problem goes away. Anyway, um, these, so that it's got cast iron guides. As you could tell, they're also not machined. So one of the things that's notorious for Vortec heads is you can only run so much lift before the retainer actually would hit the seal. So let me explain. This is a check spring, as you could see. And I'm not gonna be able to move it down because the valve's gonna hit the deck. 
but the distance between the bottom of this retainer here to the bottom of this guy, which would be here, it only allows so much movement. Now remember, there's gonna be a seal that's above this. And on stock Vortec heads, you could only go down about 450 thousandths before the actual bottom of the retainer would wanna hit the seal that would sit up here. Now there's actually an easy solution. Um, I, myself, and most machine shops have a tool where we cut these down and we lower this down and that puts it um, further down so you have more retainer to seal clearance so you can run a higher lift cam. It's really not that much of an involved process as far as machining goes. You just have to have a special tool. Also, usually whenever we machine it, it makes it so you can run a better seal. So for instance, these have an umbrella seal that you run, but usually when we're done machining, you can run a proper posi seal. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Now, if it looks like, boy, you've got a bunch of clearance, well, this is an aftermarket titanium retainer. It's just what I use for flowing the head. And this is a 155 diameter um, titanium deal. What you can't do, and that brings up another point, is these spring pockets are machined for a 125 spring. So as you can tell, this retainer, it's larger than the machined area there. So you really can't run a big spring as they are. Of course, there's another tool that is available that you can actually machine this whole spring pad area to cut for a larger spring in case you are wanting to run a 150 spring. The, something to keep in mind though is you gotta be really careful when you're doing it because on some heads, when you cut out to a larger spring, you can break through in the port here. So this is the intake port because as you're cutting out wider, it will drop down and actually break through. Not a good thing. Um, on the EQs for sure, I know um, when I, I had cut many of them to 150 or 155 and they've cleared fine. Some might be asking, why did you do that? The customer wanted to run this, I think it was K850. It was a K-motion valve spring. Don't quote me on that number, but it was a K-motion spring. And it was a 150 diameter, and he wanted specifically to run that spring, and it worked great for what he was doing, but it was a much larger diameter than 125. So, of course, machine that too. These looks like you might be able to get to it. There's probably enough material because it's so thick anyway, because the runners are small. You probably can get away with that. Next thing, these have pressed in guides. I mean, not sorry, pressed in studs. Not a huge fan of that. Um, as you know, or several people know, um, these pressed in guides, if you add a lot of spring pressure, and that sometimes doesn't even take a lot of spring pressure, they can actually start pulling out and you'll lose your press. So you're like, ah, oh, crap, what do you do? Well, what thing you can do is you can have, um, you can take it to a machine shop and have these pulled. I don't do them because in the one machine shop I used to work for, and I'm not making this up either, you're gonna think I am. We used to pull these studs out all the time, but the problem was is the stud puller would break after probably the third use, third time doing a head, so you make a one head, second head, third head, it would break. Or, and this really sucked and it happened a lot, you go to pull the stud out and the stud itself breaks, and then it's like such a pain getting it out. So, um, I hate doing it and I won't do it, but some machine shops have no problem doing it. And I promise you it's going to be expensive. If it's a good machine shop, they're going to charge you a little, a little bit of money to do it because you have to pull out this stud. And typically what you'll do is you'll machine this part area down to make up for the guide uh, plate that will run here. And then you run, tap the hole and you run a screw in stud. The other alternative, and a lot of people have done this for since, at least since I started um, racing even in the nineties is they would pin the stud. So there's a drill bit. And what you do is you drill through this casting here in through the stud and comes out. And then you put a dowel pin in and you beat it in and that holds the stud in place and the stud can't pull out. That's much easier to do. Um, and most machine shops will do that as well. I again will not do that. I just don't want to mess with it. But most machine shops will. The disadvantage of that one is if the stud fails for whatever reason, um, let's say your threads get messed up, you really can't change them. So, I mean, you can knock out the pin, pull it out, but then you're into doing the screw in stud thing. So that kind of sucks. So, but it's much cheaper than having screw in studs put in. Next thing, this is a little, the holes itself, and I can't confirm this, look like they're bigger than they are from the factory as far as where the push rods go. As you know, most Vortec heads run self-aligning rockers so that the rocker stays there so they don't really need a guide plate. Some people can go either way. So if the hole is big enough, you can run a guide plate 
and do regular rockers. But if you don't want to, you can of course run self-aligning rockers. And all that is, is there's like a piece of the rocker that goes and centers itself over the valve itself to keep it from moving as opposed to the guide plate meet, keeping the push rod steady so that the rocker doesn't move. There's that. So I think the runners on these should be 176 cc's. You might ask, are you gonna CC them? Absolutely not, I ain't got time for that. Um, and then this is the exhaust side. The exhaust really is, let me flip, the exhaust looks very similar to the stock one in a way, because you see how much material there was. When I used to port caster in a bunch, I would always make these square here because they're so leaned over. And it always seemed like it picked up quite a bit of flow, but we'll see what these flow anyway. Like I said, on the outside part of it, it really does look close to the 906. So, flipping it back. They have a 194 valve I'm gonna float with and a 150 exhaust valve. This is where I'm gonna get an opinion. Vortec heads from the factory typically have like a flame hardened seat. Um, some have, like this, a hardened insert. And my, some people have asked, well, is in a 906 or 062? I've seen them both ways, and it's hard to say, well, did they come from the factory that way or did someone modify them? I can't tell you. What I can tell you is the factory ones that have the seat insert like this suck for flow on the exhaust side um, because it's got this ridge similar to what this has. This one's not going to do it on the exhaust because if you look where it's machined, it goes right into a hard 90 degree angle because of that. Or not 90, but it's definitely a sharp angle there. So I don't think it's going to do very good. The seat itself, Procomp puts in cheap seats, so these are probably not the best quality. They look real shiny because of what they do, but they're like a pattern metal. They come off like butter, um, and then they look gray when you're done doing them, unless you do it at a super high speed. The intake side is probably as flame and hardened, or however they harden this. They don't actually have to put a seat in. Anyway, that's the head. I'm going to go ahead and float it on a 430 board, and we'll see what it does, and I'll share the results with you. Before I show you the numbers on this, I got to thinking as I was flowing and I was talking about the studs and stuff. If you were to convert these to screw-in studs, uh, and I'm not joking, you probably will have more in labor costs to have this converted to screw-in studs than what these heads cost from Speedmaster. I know that's kind of crazy because I was like, I think at the time when I was working there, it was like 150 bucks. Um, just in labor to pull out the studs and do all the machine work to make them a screw in stud But then you still have to buy studs and guide plates I like I think you'd be pushing like 2 220 and I think these heads new sell for 275 maybe So I don't know that it's worth it for you guys to do it. You know, like I would Thinking back if I was you I really would just pin them and then if you break a stud buy a new head I know that sounds so crazy But anyway, um, let me show you the numbers uh, just so you know uh, the intake valve does have a 30 degree back cut and it's a 194 so and I can't remember off the top of my head It's been such a long time since I've seen a stock Vortec head um, So I can't say if I can't remember if the stock Vortec 194 head had a uh, back cut on it My thinking is no, but they might have I know the older 882 heads and things like that did not so um, I'm not for sure but this does have a back cut which in Theory, and in, not in theory, but in most times I've ever seen it, the back cut helps lower the flow. And since this head really is, typically when people run this, they run out of lower lifts anyway, um, it should help out the flow numbers. But I'm gonna show you those, okay? And also, just so you know, it's a 4030 bore, which is similar, you know, it's a 350 bore, 30 over. All right, here, let's look. Here are the numbers. So this is the intake, this is the exhaust. And if you look, the ones I care a lot about are 400, which is 206 and 600 is 210 which you're like why 600 <laughs> i'm so used to roller cams and stuff that were at least in that range i usually care about peak too because it tells you how stable the port is this thing is not good and i'll show you here in a minute um some other vortex heads just to give you an idea but it's, it's just it's not good um this number's right here and listen to me closely when i say this these numbers on the intake side look a lot like the flow numbers for a stock uh, 462 camel hump with 194s, uh, your 291s, uh, 292s. That's about what they flow. So Vortex actually usually flow more, but not this. This is about what they flow. Um, maybe a slight better. The exhaust side, it's in the 140s. Um, that's kind of close to the Vortex from uh, what I can remember, but it's, it's not great. I actually thought these would be worse, but it's... It's about what it is. It's still really low. 128 at four is pretty low. So that's the numbers. 
Now the customer does want me to um, do a valve job on them, a performance valve job, and see what it gains. And it will pick up. Um, I don't know how much you're gonna pick up without port work. But there's what this is. But just to give you a comparison, because this is the cool numbers and all, but how does it actually compare to other things? Well, here's what I've got for you. This next one, just to show you though, this is an aftermarket head too, but this is an EQ Vortec head. And like I said, I'm fairly certain they don't make them anymore. Um, if you look at how much better it is, it's 218 at four compared to a 206, so much better. But then if you look at the flow, I mean, it's 230 at five, that's pretty good. And 237 at six, see why I like this head so much. This is the exhaust flow. Uh, the exhaust flow is 145, which is more than this thing flowed peak. And that's at 400 uh, lift. You can ignore this 175. The reason why it says 175 is because I used to flow the exhaust ports without an exhaust pipe till peak, and then I'd put exhaust pipe on just to see how much it gained. But anyway, so from 700 under, this is what it flows without an exhaust pipe. So, but it's better. But how's that? That's great though. But you, what's an actual 906 casting flow? Well, I got that too. All right, let me get rid of this papers here. Okay, this one's gonna look a little confusing. Cylinder one is the stock 906 casting, and this one did not have a hardened seat. It's a pretty good one. For as far as the 906 as I've seen, it's pretty good. If you look at it, it flows 204, which at four, which this one flows 206. So it is it is slightly better at four. Uh, the Speedmaster one is compared to a stock Vortec until you look at the 500 number. At 500, it went 229. If you look at this one, it's only uh, 208. Stock Vortex better. Now, if you look at the exhaust, uh, 400 is 131 compared to 128. You see what I mean? It's it's still better. Again, ignore the, that one number. At the end, that's with the exhaust pipe, all the rest without exhaust pipe. Now, you might, what's cylinder two? Well, I had ported this set of heads. Um, it's been many years ago, and I did not go balls to the wall before you're thinking that. This was a um, valve job. I think I cut them out to a 202. Did some port work and did not get too heavy with them. In case you're wondering what's the most I, I have ever got one to flow was 292. And I would never even try. I don't port cast anymore anyway. Because when I did that, the underneath the area of the short side I got gets pretty thin. And I've had some where I've tried going further and it actually broke through. Now I don't port cast iron anymore, so I don't have to worry about that. But this one is really... You guys could duplicate this. It's fairly safe. It's not getting really stupid aggressive where it would have a problem with hitting water. But because of that, it also backs up. But if you look at it, it's at 223 at four, which is a really good number. Um, I mean, pretty good gain. And 256 at five. So a much bigger improvement there than, of course, it trails off. And the reason why it trails off is because the short side can't support those air speeds and it backs up. Again, you can get this to keep climbing, but you'd have to do some things with the short side and there's not a lot of material there. Exhaust really picks up though. I mean, now you're like 267 at four and a peak flow of like 192 without an exhaust pipe attached. So um, that gives you an idea of how much better it could be. I've, the EQ ones have gone considerably better. Just doing the same things that I did here on the EQ ones, you'll be in the 270s. Um, and there's more room on the short side, so you don't have to worry about it hitting water. But again, they don't, I'm fairly certain they don't make them anymore. So hopefully that gives you some information that you can use um, to it. The head should get a valve job done on them, you know, nice five angle, which I think it, looking at it, like, it looked like it had more than three. So, but that should pick up. The exhaust side for sure will pick up with a radius exhaust valve job and blend that in. But um, anyway, uh, hope you enjoy the video. You guys take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.